welcome back to Gaming as Adults. I'm Jessica, and, um, so while we were working on the desk, as you previously saw, I didn't do any intros or outros for anything, so welcome to part two, where we go ahead and take care of some of the bigger issues with the desk, and, uh, let's just jump in and, and see what happens. Okay, so we finished, uh, the camera died yesterday. And we finished getting all the stuff off the sides, and then today we're gonna take off these sides. We got wood uh, to replace the top and the sides, and we also got a saw so we can cut it. Uh, shit's done fucked, so we're gonna fix it. All right, let me explain a little bit more. So yesterday we were talking about the sides and how we needed to take the veneer off in order to stain the side. And as you can see, this looks like it's stainable. You've still got, um, you know, the grain of the wood that's readily available. However, we realized something yesterday. The veneer is also on the front. Is also on the front. So, I don't know if you guys know this, but for those of you that don't, this is what that front's going to look like. And so you can't necessarily stain this because you'll just get a bunch of pieces that look different. Notice how when it's not stained, they already look like different colors. That's what it will look like, but on the front. And then you'll have those stupid lines that just go through. So, versus on this side, which is original, and those are solid planks. Right. So... Uh, we have to replace these sides. Unfortunately, we don't have any wood, and Home Depot didn't have any wood that was these dimensions, because these dimensions apparently are really weird. So we got the next best thing. We got a couple of pieces of these for, oh my god, my camera angle sucks. Anyways, of these for the sides. We got three pieces, because one of them is going to get cut in half, and we're going to have to glue side to side, wrong side to long side, and make our own to the proper dimension, which is an old way of doing things, and it's kind of the reason why plywood exists now. So basically the process is, is that you will drill holes in the side, on both sides. You line them up perfectly, and you drill your holes in exactly the same spot. Then you put a spacer dowel of some sort in here and it will protrude. Then you put it in there. You squish them together and you glue it. So long as you don't cut where the dowel is, it should hold if done properly. Here's the problem. It's a royal pin. And there's a reason why we don't do it anymore except for on an industrial scale and that is because it's a royal pin. The reason why we're going to do it here it's because we have to do it over here. That's because it was originally done like that here. Correct. You can see the seam is very clean here. This one's just cracking. That's different. Yeah. Uh, which we can just press that together. But there's a dowel here and a dowel here already. Yep. And a dowel here already. Yep. So basically the legs of this have to get torn apart. And so now we're going to demo it, and Safely. away we go. Safely demo. Safely demo. Because, what? uh, well, we want to Well, we got to preserve it. Yeah. So. All right. Way to work we go. Let's get stepping.
We got the sides off. We got the centerpiece taken out. Um, upon closer inspection and attempting to close up the gaps on the inner pieces, uh, they don't move. And the original, this support is original. So it's got little wooden caps on it instead of little uh, wood putty. Wood putty caps. So we can't take that off, which means that we can't take these these uh, planks off to force them back together. So um, we're just gonna hope it doesn't come apart anymore because uh, if we took these off, we could destroy it. Kind of integral to the support. So, oops. So. Hope for the best. <laughs> Anyways, what Jessica's trying to say, we take off the support bars. It's very likely that the support bars themselves will be broken. If the support bars themselves are broken, then that means that one of the drawers will no longer fit in. And if that drawer does not fit in, then there's nowhere for the bottom. Um, I guess the resting shelf of the drawer to support in between these two parts. So basically, anytime you would attempt to move it, the top would be forcing these two portions away from each other, but that would be the only thing forcing those two portions away from each other. If you've ever owned any desk made in Ikea, you would understand that that is not a very good answer. Especially when the two sides are extremely heavy. If it was something like a table design, you know, where you only have four uh, very skinny, maybe less than three inches in one direction um, for the legs, then that would be fine. But because we've got basically filing cabinets on either side of a solid piece of wood top, it's simply not going to work. In addition to that, many of you may not have noticed, but some of you may have, that wood that's going to replace the top is not a solid piece. It's also not an extremely high quality piece. That is pine. Unfortunately, it's what's available. So, take it or leave it. I guess it's what we've got. It's what we've got to work with. Now it's time for a break. Yeah, because it's like 90 degrees out here and this shed is galvanized steel. And there's no air conditioning. Fuck, there isn't any power. There's no light, there's no nothing. So basically, we're trying to keep this door open. That way we can get somewhat of a breeze. And man, it just is not working. The wind keeps closing it. Yep. Um, so I know that we mentioned what we can and can't do with the wood on the door pieces. Um, we retook our measurements for the top piece and the side panels off camera. Um, We've decided that we're just going to equate for these little buffer pieces, these like edge pieces here and here. We're just going to add it into the whole panel on the top and just grind out the curve. We're just going to bevel it. Um, so. Because this is just glued on or nailed off. So it's going to be easier just to add it into the main piece rather than trying to create additional pieces just to glue them on. Right. So finishing nails, which is what this dude used, and he didn't use like normal finishing nails, which I understand, you know, we ran into the same issue where we were trying to find three-fourths of an inch long finishing nails. And all we could find was an inch and a half. Right. So we're going to have to use extra long finishing nails which is like stupidly absurd. He did the same thing all over the place, so I've got a pretty good feeling that those bevels are attached with wood glue and three-fourths of an inch. Uh. There's a wasp in here. Uh. Anyway, three-fourths of an inch. Um, not three-fourths of an inch, one and a half inch or two inch finishing nails. And those little pieces of trim, I'm not confident enough that I can get them off in a state that is manageable, being as they still have to be like... In one piece. Right, and then and then sanded after that and then stained. So... Right, they, and they're already kind of... Beat to hell. Beat up by the finishing screws being knocked out. Right, 
And so, so like, there really isn't much that we can really do about it because it's such a thin piece of wood. So we're just gonna try to make the whole top panel what? one solid panel. And that starts Jeez. with, funny enough, two pieces of wood. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're gonna make one solid piece. So we're gonna cut these to size to fit this shape. Back up. No, we can't cut them first. We're gonna glue them together. And then? And, and then let them sit and dry. Uh, you're missing a couple steps there. We're gonna glue them together. They are gonna get glued together. So, if we look over here in these original pieces of wood, you'll see these little wood pieces. Broken dowels. They look like that. They're dowels, all right? So what would happen is you'd have a dowel and it would stick up kind of like this. And what you would do is you drill another hole on a separate piece of wood. And it would kind of look like that. And then you would put this perfectly. And I mean perfectly, because if it's not perfect, it's not gonna work. You're gonna break the dowel. You fill this with glue and put the dowel in there after, after this glue is already set and the dowel is sticking out. This, there's a reason why we don't do this anymore. Number one, it's a pain. It's a real pain because you have to get the dowel just ever so perfectly and you have to know exactly how much material is sticking out and how deep is the hole on the other piece of wood and how much glue is there and then you have to clamp everything down and there can't be any gaps here because if there's gaps, it's gonna fall apart. But it's the original style. It's the original way that it was built. And so in order to keep it structurally sound, without making everything look obnoxious and just disgusting, we have to keep with the original style. And so that's what we're gonna do. And we're gonna do the same thing on these two pieces of wood. We're gonna set them up side by side and drill symmetrical holes. And yeah. What? had a little bit of footage corrupt here at the end where we pretty much just sanded everything down, got everything to line up, and prepped it to be attached to each other. Um, in the next part, you'll see us actually discuss how we did that and what went on in that process, and we will be showing the process for how we did that for the two side panels. Um, Thanks for watching and join us shortly for the next installment of this.